Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Let's talk about congenital long QT syndrome, where patients have recurrent syncope, a QT interval that's usually 0.5 to 0.7 seconds, documented ventricular arrhythmias, and sudden death. Um, there's the presence of the Jorvel Lang Nielsen syndrome or um, you know the Romano Ward syndrome, which results in congenital deafness. Um, inheritance is usually autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant in the cases of Romano Ward syndrome, and uh, specific genetic mutations affect the membrane potassium and sodium channels, respectively. Now, because uh, this is a primary electrical disorder, usually there's no evidence of any kind of a structural heart disease or of, say, left ventricular uh, hypertrophy or um, left ventricular dysfunction. Also, the long-term treatment with beta blockers, permanent pacing, um, has been shown to be effective, and ICD implantation is recommended for patients with recurrent episodes of syncope or sustained ventricular arrhythmias and sudden death. Um, the acquired long QT syndrome is secondary to the use of antiarrhythmic agents, antidepressants, or electrolyte abnormalities. Typically, patients who uh, result in having ventricular tachycardia, particularly torsadus de pointis, which is a um, condition where there's twisting about the baseline into the uh, various QRS morphologies, um, are common anti um, are common um, arrhythmias associated with long QT syndrome. There's also the quinidine effect, and um, in the quinidine effect, the um, you know, patients can have an additional risk of developing the long QT syndrome. The management of torsadus is, um, you know, different from other forms of ventricular tachycardias. Classic, you know, class 1, 1C, or 3 antiarrhythmics, which prolong the QT intervals, are avoided um, or they're withdrawn immediately. And intravenous beta blockers may be effective, especially in congenital form, but in the um, long QT interval of acquired form, intravenous magnesium should be given acutely to patients and also the use of temporary ventricular or atrial pacing um, can help to break or prevent the rhythm. Okay, so those are the key characteristics that you want to remember for the board exam for long QT syndrome.